Now I know I've been tying a lot from the Federation of Fly Fishers Pattern Encyclopedia lately, but I just can't help it. This book has got so many great flies in it. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So one of the great things about this book, and just take a look at this. Uh, all these tabs right here. I went through it earlier today. This is just a dry fly section. I've added 25 flies to my to-do list just in the dry flies. And one of the most fun things about this, you're finding some fairly obscure patterns at times, some flies that just look really cool, have some pretty cool names, and a lot of them are by tires that you may or may not have heard of. Now this pattern I'm going to do today, you might have heard of this guy, Jeff Bear Andrews, created this fly called the Mattress Thrasher. Now, if that's not a cool name for a fly, I don't know what is. Now, about Bear Andrews, I just listened to a podcast interview he did. It's posted on MidCurrent. I'll link to it in the description. But he sounds like quite a, an interesting character. He's a commercial tire and a writer from up in Michigan. And he said he got the nickname Bear because he used to be a bear hunter, and he was a pretty gruff hockey player at Northern Michigan University. So about the fly, it does remind me a little bit of a stimulator, but it's not, and it's a little bit easier to tie than a stimulator. And the recipe does say it should be tied in some smaller sizes from a 10 to 16. Now granted it is on a 3X long nymph hook, or if you've got a 3X long dry fly hook, I'm sure that's gonna be fine too. Now it's not a huge pattern. I wouldn't say this thing should be tied to imitate a hopper, probably just a general attractor dry fly. But it's a really cool pattern, not hard to tie. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, a mattress thrasher. Pretty cool looking buggy fly. And yes, it does look very similar to a stimulator, but it's not, it's got a cooler name. Now the recipe says size 10 to 16, a 3X long nymph hook. I'm going with uh, size 10, see if I can get that barb pinched in there. So that's a size 10, 3X long, generic hook, could be a nymph, could be a hopper, whatever you want, but it isn't a size 10. And black thread, whatever size is your go-to, just lay a base down to the start of the bend. Now let's put some wax on and dub the back two-thirds of this body. Now if you don't have one of these quarter-inch dowels that you've super glued a size 14 hook into, you should make one. This thing is very convenient and it'll last you forever and it fits into these holes of our dubbing containers just perfectly. So let's take enough black. This is an Antron synthetic dubbing. Just take enough to dub up the first two thirds or so, or the back two thirds of the body. Okay, that wasn't going on very well, so I got a couple of wraps caught in and then I can tighten it up a little bit more. And I might need just a little bit more than this to get me up as far as I want. Okay, that's a little lumpy, but I think it'll do. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put some more wax on my thread for this next component I'm gonna tie in and it's just some deer hair. If you have Comparadon hair, some of this stuff right here, it does stack a little better and it's a little bit cleaner, but if you don't have this, just use some regular deer hair and make sure you get it a good stack. Let's see if this stacked very well. Yeah, it looks close enough. And we want the tail or the wing to be, you know, back to the end of the body, I'd say almost to the bend of the hook. Let's go with about right there. And why I wax this thread is sometimes if I'm doing a bucktail, I will put a wrap just around the hair, but I'm not doing that this time. I think it's not necessary, so I'm gonna put a couple of tight wraps right there, and it's gonna flare up a little bit more than we want. So what you can do here, just kinda of hold it down, and then put a couple of medium wraps going back, and now we can Put a, a tighter wraps going forward and if you wanted to you could always just lift that wing up and put a wrap of thread up under it and I don't think it's necessary right here I'm gonna go ahead and put a few extra right here before I snip off this front so that's caught in pretty tight right there we should be good
Now, if you can cut that at a taper, yeah, sure, go for it. If not, just try to use your thread right here to build a smooth underbody. This is where we're gonna have our thorax and our palmer tackle here shortly. But before we do that, let's go ahead and tie in our legs. And I'm using these pumpkin colored silly legs, the orange and yellow, pretty cool looking stuff. We got some glitter in there. And I will just take a maybe a two inch piece of it. I'm gonna fold it back over till I get the ends lined up like that right there. And then just lay it on either side and about to the back of the fly I think is gonna look good. So I'm gonna hold it on the side and these are a little bit unwieldy. They'll start going all over the place on you, but that's fine. So I'm, these are loose wraps right here so that I can still adjust it if I need to. Pull them down a little bit on this side and down. So I like the length of those legs right there. They're gonna be just fine. Now I'll kind of try to hold them in place and put a couple of tight wraps right here to really lock them in. Make sure I haven't messed them up too much. No, I think they're fine. We might need to trim them in a minute, but we'll, we'll make that call when we get toward the end of the fly. So a few more wraps right here going forward. I'm trying to keep these pretty much coming off the sides like that right there. And I think, let's go a little bit more forward. We can adjust this with our, our dubbed thorax here shortly as well. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine right there. But before we work in our thorax, let's go ahead and catch in some hackle. And a grizzly hackle, you might wanna use an undersized one, but if you don't have an undersized one, don't worry about it, we're gonna trim the bottom of it anyway. So pull it around, I think that right there is gonna be fine. Make sure you got enough feather that you can get four or five good wraps. I'll just strip back a bare stem to get a tie-in point. Now I'm gonna catch this hackle in right back here in front of these back legs. Okay, that's gonna work right there and snip the butt end off of that if you need to. In this case, I don't even need to. So I'm gonna take it back, put a little bit more wax on my thread. Now I'm gonna dub the thorax. And I'm gonna use that same Antron, but this time in an orange or a yellow, which will look good with this color. And that's, well, that's what the recipe calls for anyway, a yellow thorax. And probably about the same amount we did on the back maybe a little bit less but I want it to be a little bit thicker just change the profile a little bit on us and I might have put too much dubbing on here we'll see in just a second if I can tighten this up we'll be fine and I'm going to use this dubbing to help position this these front legs so I'll just lift them up and put a couple of wraps right up under them I don't want them sticking out on me but I don't want them lean or pointing directly forward either. So is that gonna to be too much? Nah, we'll be able to work with that. Okay. Don't wanna to get too close to my eye, I'm crowding it just a little bit right there. But let's go ahead and snip this front piece off right here and see what we've got. Those front legs are gonna be a little bit long. We'll trim them in the, one of the later steps. But next up, let's just go ahead and palmer this grizzly hackle up and four or five turns should be fine. Maybe three or four behind it and one in front of it. We'll see what that does for us. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Now this step is a little bit tricky to catch this hackle off without, uh, you know, messing up your legs or catching them. So you just kinda have to wiggle it through there a little bit. And let's go ahead and take one more two more tight wraps before we snip this off. I don't want that hackle slipping out on me. Okay, I think we're fine. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna just try to pull all these back a little bit so I have some room, or make a little bit of a head, make some room for our whip finish. And I've got a little bit of fluff right there, but I'm not crowding my eye, so I'm in fine shape right here. Now let's just whip finish it. And this could be a little bit tricky here um, to either zigzag it through or just hold these legs back and try to get you at least four turns on right here.
All right, how do our legs look? Adjust them if you need to. Those front ones are a little long. I like how it looks on the bottom, so let's make these front ones just a little bit shorter than the back ones. And how's that gonna look? That's what the fish is gonna see right there. I think that's pretty cool. Oh wait, one more step. Uh, the recipe does say trim the bottom hackle, you know, no longer than the, the hook gap. So just something like that right there, that I think that's gonna work. A drop of head cement right there. There's what the fish sees. Pretty cool looking pattern. So that's it everybody. I appreciate y'all watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.